Hello, welcome to the channel. I'm George and today we're going to do an unboxing. I've decided to do a, a series of videos, maybe not in sequence, things you need if you're just starting out in this hobby of radio restoration and repair. And the first thing you're going to need is a soldering iron of some description. You're always going to need that. I'm not going to go and use my expensive Weller. I thought let's start with something that's affordable, cheap, easy to use and this is it on the bench. Now I bought this from AliExpress, they can be had from Amazon, they can be had from all sorts of other places. Let's open the box and see what happens. Well inside the box we have two white boxes. Aww. Let's choose a white box shall we and see what we get. Okay hopefully this will be focused in. Let's move that white box out the way for them now. Now I'm unwrapping it the same time as you're seeing this. I've not done this so far so okay. Um, we have a soldering iron stand with a sponge and a whatever that is. It's got a it's got a thing to loop round itself. Uh, mm. Who knows? I'll look at that later. As I say, it's got the sponge, so that's that bit. And here is the first of what I hope is the only not very good things about this set. Let me just undo this wire. You have a, an IEEE socket, not a problem. I can live with that, that's very nice. On this end, we have a totally illegal plug and the trouble with this is there's no fuse at all in it. So if you plug this in and there's a fault, you will get the entire UK main circuit voltage and current flowing through this and possibly through whatever's on the end of this. That's 32 amps at 240 volts. Not very nice. That will hurt. It will hurt a lot. By that time, this cheap cable, and I'll say cheap cable because it feels cheap, will have melted. So I shall put the plug on and we'll come back in a short while when I've done that. If you want to see how to put a plug on, I've got a video. I'll, I'll put a card up. It'll be up there. The card will be this side. Watch that video after this one if you need to know how to put a plug on. OK, so I'm back again. Just finished wiring the plug. Now, I've put the plug on it. But trust me, throw this lead away and use a proper one. eBay do them, I know that. You can buy them from Amazon. But whatever you do, throw this thing away because the wire is absolutely awful. I'm going to persevere. Now, I'm quite willing to mess about with this. What I'm also going to do is while I'm here on the top of the plug, I'm going to write 3 amp because that's what it's fused at. Not anything higher, not a 13. So we've got that, so let's move that to one side and we've got the final white box, which I'm guessing, and it's only a random guess, contains the actual soldering iron. Because we've got a pretty stand. So let's turn this over. And the first thing that pops out is a T12 very pointy element. Okay, let's put that to there. We have looks like a, a lead with a crock clip on the end okay um, I would imagine that's an earthing cable if you have to be ESD safe rubbish in the dustbin you get a soldering iron and you get a, a box You get a reasonable sort of lead. What's that about? It's about a metre long, so that's not too bad. Three feet if you're working in old money. A multi-plug, which I guess plugs in there. Tightens up with a screw mechanism. Let's put the tip in. Like this. There we have that and that. Let's plug that into that. Let's plug our 
mains cable into there and it's already switched on we have a illuminated switch at the back the display is currently flying up it's it if that's the temperature it's heating very very fast it's currently drawing 20 watts 22 2 watts now i'm going to set it to 375 now i don't know what pushing that has done Okay, so it's hovering around what I wanted it set at, 375, which is the normal temperature I use on my Weller iron, which we're not using today. And I thought, right, how can I demonstrate a soldering iron? And I suppose the easiest way is to actually do some soldering with it. So I got a little kit. Hopefully it's a complete kit. And... What I'm going to do is I'm going to build the thing up and see exactly how it works and how it how it does. I've got the temperature on this set to 375, which is my normal temperature, as I said earlier. And this seems to not be drawing a great deal of current. It's um, it's definitely flicking itself backwards and forwards and thinking what it's doing. So let's move that out of the way. I'm going to move that slightly out of the way because we don't actually need to see that. Move that over because I'm right-handed. And let's tip this kit out and see what happens. So we've got a bag of bits, a pile of resistors. So we've got the resistors in the board. So this tip will have heated up. Let's see how it solders on this board. Now this is an extremely fine tip, which is probably not the best general purpose tip but let's have a go and let's solder some legs So far, it's soldering quite nicely. Now, this tip is not doing us any favours, I'll be honest. This tip is not ideal for this job. But it's, it's certainly soldering. It's just getting used to this, this very pointy tip. For general purpose, no, I would recommend getting an, at least one different tip in your arsenal. And no, that's not a rude reference. Right, let's just have a quick look at the quality of that. Right, that one is a bit naff, and that one could do with a bit more solder in it, so. Now, as, as I said earlier, this is 0.7 multi-core solder. It has the rosin built in, the flux built in. It's not lead free it is full leaded solder because lead free is the work of the devil the devil himself so that's that let's go for the next next four components these four diodes bend those down one two three four turn it over and again let's have another go clean the tip it's quite flexible the lead that's um it is quite important that, that that is the case, certainly from my point of view. It's it's a silicon type wire. I don't think it, it's certainly not as flexible as the again, I'm comparing it to the Weller, but you can't really compare. This is twenty I think I paid in total twenty two or twenty three pounds. I'll put the actual figure up on the screen for this. The Weller brand new is is in the hundreds of pounds, so it's not fair to compare this 
directly to to something that's you know more than two hundred percent increase in price. But as far as a soldering iron works, it's actually quite comfortable to hold. It's got the rubber rubber there. It's not too thick, which is a nice thing. It feels it feels very similar to my normal one. I said I wasn't going to compare to the Weller as far as you know touch and feel. It, it's a lot thinner, you know, this, this is a, a beefier feeling iron, but this doesn't feel like a toy, it feels perfectly acceptable, it's not too heavy, it's, it's about right, I'm, I'm certainly not going to knock it at all. And, and for the price, you know, can we complain? Well, we could complain, but I'm not going to, because I'm actually, I'm actually quite impressed with it. Right, so that's the little crystal tester done. And uh, let's have a look at how the soldering has gone. It all looks really nice, good joints. They're not the best joints I've done, I'll be honest. I I've done better joints. Is that a joint, man? <laughs> man. But for a new tool, it's certainly, it's certainly doing the job. I haven't got anything I can see that's left a dry joint. All the components are fully soldered in. The whole point was the soldering iron. And I think in this case, I'm going to say, if you need a soldering iron, you can't go wrong with these T12 designs. They are quite a nice little unit. There are issues. Obviously, the major issue is the mains cord, I would say. Throw it away. Use a decent one. I do have better quality ones in here, but uh, I thought I'm going to show just how this comes. As far as, you know, a compact little unit, yeah, I'd recommend it. Up here will be another video. Down here will be another video. You might like to watch some of my other stuff. Over here is the subscribe button. And if you did like the video, Click like, give it a thumbs up, thank you very much. If you didn't, just tell me why. With that, I'm going to wish you all the best, and hopefully we'll see you for another video. Bye for now.